Welcome everyone. We're excited to share some country wisdom with you. King Solomon had a thing or two to say about the path to wisdom. In Proverbs 4, he wrote, Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Keep straight the path of your feet and all your ways will be sure. Join us now for Country Wisdom. It is so surprising. You've got a whole town just right a few feet away, but you come off the beaten path and there's this beautiful little glade uh, with, with the stream. What is it about water? I could just stand on a bridge like this, gazing down at the water, listening to the ripple for the rest of the day. But we don't have the whole day, but it, yeah, I, I think about too, you know, Jesus, it was somewhat like that. He's at the temple surrounded by Jerusalem, the Brook Kidron running not far from there. And it was a festival day, kind of toward the end of all the great festivities, lots of people there, crowds of people. And you've got people bickering back and forth too about Jesus, you know, is he really the one, is he not the one? You know, and the Pharisees, you know, the leadership of the church, they're, <laughs> they're bad mouthing him all the time. And he stands up that day in the midst of everybody. And this is what he says. I want to read it to you. It's in chapter 7 of John. It says, In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow living water. Wow, what, what's that all about? Flow living water. He, he kind of mixes metaphors a little bit because he's also speaking of the Holy Spirit as the water. Well, first of all, I think you have to understand what living water is. I was researching uh, something not that long ago and it, with the Jewish rituals of the washing, you know, yep. it couldn't just be a bucket with water in there. For, old, old stale water? For the, for the <laughs> religious part of it, it had to be moving living water, something from a spring, from a stream, from a brook. Uh, and I thought that is, it, it was just a new thought to me because we know water represents the spirit. You can just be sucking in a bunch of water, but if there's no outflow, you end up attracting mosquito larvae and, you know, and, and scum on the top. And Let's make uh, it a little more graphic, shall we? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's true. There are, it I think, it a is. lot of Christians who feel like they have it the is. spirit. They're not letting any of it come out. <laughs> that, that, that can sit on the shelf and collect piles of dust. The living word, <laughs> the living water is right there. And you never, you never taste it, you never look at it, you never see it. Um, I, I mean, it's just, it's pretty incredible the things that Jesus talked about and the way he spoke of them and what he desired for us to have. I mean, a living experience. Right, not a stagnant experience. Yeah, not stagnant. Yeah, I, I was saved once. I knew Jesus when I was a kid. Haven't spoken since, but you know, yeah. I'll call them up if I ever need them. <laughs> you know, I, we laugh about that, but unfortunately it's really true. That's, that's a lot of Christian experience. I mean, you think about it. The savior of the universe is standing there among them that day, and they're debating about, you know, who is this guy? He's a carpenter's son, you know? And on and on and on. And the religious leaders, the church leaders who should have been pointing to him because they knew all the prophecies, they, they knew where he was to be born. They knew everything about him, really. God had told them hundreds and hundreds of years before to identify him. Didn't want it because he might uh, cut into their turf. There was something, water is mentioned over and over in scripture. But I read something interesting on Facebook of all places. Occasionally something good comes out of Facebook. And it was saying three of the things that people, that humans need to live, food, air, water. And all three of those, Jesus says he was the bread of life, the breath of life, and the water of life. Everything we need. And you think about the human body is made up of at least 60% water. 
some of the tissues, the lungs are like 85%. I mean, even the bones, I'm told, have 30% or more water content. We can't live without water. Right. Why don't we go down and get closer to that water? Sounds good. There's a little path <laughs> I saw. Sounds good. Jeremiah 17, verse 9, tells us that our hearts are hopelessly deceitful and sick. We're all in desperate need of a heart transplant. The good news is that a new heart is available, free of charge with no waiting list. You can have it here and now, simply for the asking. This little pamphlet, A Gift for You, is our free gift to you about God's free gift to all of us, the gift of a new heart. Go to TalkingDonkeyInternational.org and request offer number 125, A Gift for You. Hi, I'm Steve Hicks, Director of Podcast Ministries for Talking Donkey International, and I'm inviting you to join us for our new daily podcast, Monday through Friday, called Something's Happening Here. I need you to go to the website that's on your screen right now. That's the Something's Happening Here Facebook page. Like that page. That will make you a follower of it, and you will get all of our content as we create it. I look forward to seeing you there. God bless. Hey Janice, how are you doing? Hey, you wrote another book. I did, had a burden on my heart and God helped me get it done. So, The Plan of Love, what's it about? Well, it's really about God in eternity, saw everything that was going to happen here and His amazing love, He says, I'm going to take care of the problem, I'm going to take care of the situation by giving my own life. He did all that, but we've been lied to so much we don't see what God is plan for us, what God is doing for us. Matter of fact, the angel came down to Mary and said, uh, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their, their sins. sins. Notice it wasn't in, but from. Where can people get the book? Hey, I'm glad you asked. Folks, if you'd like your own personal copy, log on to TalkingDonkeyInternational.org. And oh, please, if you would, send us a donation of $12. Or more. Or more. And uh, we'll get you the book, and I'll be happy to sign it for you, too. Thank you so much. You know, I, I, I look at the story of Jesus at the temple and the crowds are massive, they're huge. He came to minister to all these people, but he also, on many occasions, he sought out the individual. And I think about it, you know, as we talk about living water, I think about that one woman he went to see in an area that was so despised by the Jews, so despised by everybody else, they never, there wasn't enough Lysol in the country to sterilize this area. <laughs> No, I love that story. It's, it's one of my favorites, the story of the woman at the well. Now, I know this isn't a well, um, but it was living water. And this is definitely here, living water. It's moving, there's life in it. And when I think of living water, that is the story that comes to mind. Uh, I mean, you reminded me of the story where he compared himself there, you know, the Brook Kidron is nearby, they're at the temple, and that's great. But if, but if you had just said, what do you think of when you think of living water? It's the Samaritan woman. It's, it's that story. Yeah. yeah. I'm, it's a pretty amazing story, you know. He's with all the disciples. And of course, that's another thing maybe we can get into in a minute about the prejudice of those disciples. Oh, I will. To, I've researched it. <laughs> yeah, to, to where he's coming, you know. But here he is at this well, and he's looking for this woman. And she finally shows up, and she sits down. Listen, listen to this conversation. He answered, said to this woman, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him to give living water. And he continues on to talk about this living water. And you know, you think about it, the, he's there and he's offering not just water from the brook, not just water from the well, but his own life he's offering to this woman. That story, I think, reaches me on a lot of levels. For, Well, for one, I think it's the longest recorded conversation of Christ's. Uh, we know that he talked to a massive number of people, but that is the longest conversation. And it's not with one of the disciples. It's not with a member of the Sanhedrin, you know, Nicodemus. It's with a woman, <laughs> Anna, Anna. which I really, you know, that calls to me. Single woman in the middle of no place at the moment too. 
right. which was kind of interesting for Christ. You mentioned that, that Jesus sought out individual people. Uh, he didn't just see crowds of people. Um, he knew everyone. He saw people and saw them in a way that we don't. Uh, I tend to walk through the mall or through Walmart or wherever I am, kind of with blinders on. I have a mission and I'm aware that there are people, but I don't focus in on my fellow man the way Jesus did. Well, you know, I think it's exciting, Janice, that you get to talk about this in a way because you've studied the life of this woman in depth and actually portrayed her to women's groups right, in right. various parts of the country. So yeah. it's exciting too because many people don't dig into such depth that you have. So keep on going, I love it. Um, in fact, one time at a Christian women's retreat, I had done my performance of the woman at the well. And the main speaker at that retreat, a very well-known uh, Christian speaker and author, she made a point of talking to me afterwards and I loved it because she said, I could tell you did your research. She goes, everything in that was theologically and historically correct. Uh, because I don't want to, you know, take a woman in the Bible and try to bring her to life, trying to put myself in her shoes and just create a little story out of out of left field. You know, yeah. out of, oh, it, I think, wouldn't it be fun if this happened to her? You know, it's not I, acting what you do. This is just portraying the right. life of a person. Right. Yeah. And I knew that story, but once I got doing research, I just kept seeing new layers to that story that I hadn't thought about. I knew, okay, Jews and Samaritans hate each other. We all, you know, most people who, if you've read the New Testament, you get the idea that Samaritans were not very high on the Jewish list of people to invite to dinner. Uh, Jesus, when he ended up there at the well, that was an accident because most Jews at that time, the most direct route to get from where, where they were to Jerusalem was straight through Samaria. That's not what they would do. I like what you said, that was no accident. There are never accidents with God. No, no, <laughs> uh, if there are always divine appointments. You know, nowadays I've literally, literally done this. I have to go somewhere, I get on the GPS, and what I want to know is what's the most direct route? You know, I don't care the yeah. most scenic, whatever, I just want to get there. Jews in that day would go miles, literally miles out of their way. They would go east, cross the Jordan, which wasn't just like driving across the Bay Bridge or something. And it wasn't going in their Tesla, they had to walk or <laughs> have their donkey. <laughs> uh, or pay to have someone, you know, ferry you across, whatever. They would go cross the Jordan, go down through Perea, recross the Jordan, all of that you know, doing this really circuitous route to not have to set foot in Samaria. Those people were literally unclean. They weren't purely Jewish. They, their religion had been infected by, you know, foreign religions. Uh, they were just horrible people in a Jewish mind on many, many levels. And this had been building for several hundred years. Oh, a thousand, yeah, yeah. Back, back from when uh, Sennacherib came and conquered that area and sent the majority of people back to Assyria and brought in these five foreign tribes to infect everybody there. So Jesus, instead of avoiding people, she was someone that I actually might have avoided myself, not for a racial or religious prejudice, but we happen to know from a little later in the story that her reputation wasn't the best. <laughs> That's she a had, nice way to say it. I'm trying to be polite. Okay. Uh, you know, at one point he asks her to go get her husband. And she's very, very coy, you know, just, I don't have one. And figured it would drop there. But he goes, You're, that's actually right. You, you gave the right answer. You don't have a husband. You've had five. And the guy that you're shacking up with right now isn't even your actual husband. And her eyes, I, I wish I'd been there to see that expression. Uh, so Jesus was breaking through racial prejudice, breaking through religious prejudice, breaking through a very misogynistic society. A Jewish man would barely speak to his own mother in public. It was just, no, you walk 10 feet behind me and I'm going to pretend you're not there. I will speak to you in our home, but out in public, you are not worthy. 
she even says, she asks him, why are you talking to me? You know, the interesting thing about that, I think is, is Jesus offers her living water. She didn't want to talk about it. She'll do anything to keep the subject someplace else. Uh, yeah, which I think we all tend to do. We don't want to talk about something that might be uncomfortable. Yeah, that hits uh, to the heart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so here he is seeking out someone that the disciples wouldn't have sought out. The disciples were probably, when he sent them into town to get food, they were probably going, <laughs> yeah. what is he doing? You know, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to argue with the master, but what is he doing? Why are we here? I don't know if you knew this. Jews could not eat with Samaritans, absolutely. There was a rule, whether it was actually written or unwritten, I don't recall. You could buy food if you had to. I mean, if you were going to be starving, I guess you can buy food from a Samaritan, which is what he sent them into town to do. But you would never sit down and share food. But at the end of this story, they didn't just, you know, go on their way. They actually stayed for two days. The elders begged him to stay. They were eating with, sleeping under the same room with, not sleep, same roof, not room, uh, doing all kinds of things that those good Jewish young men had been taught would make them unclean, been taught by their parents. Uh, in fact, there was a saying back then that the bread of Samaritans was as defiling as swine's flesh. And what was Jesus doing? Sitting down for two days, eating the food that, you, they, that they fixed. You've got to tell me more because you skipped some of her story. Oh, here. yeah, I know. I, I bounce around. I'm blonde. What do you know? I'm not going to touch that. I'd be glad that there isn't a squirrel. <laughs> I'd be way off topic. Uh, so he offers her, you know, I love the banter here because she's not really, um, she had to have had some attitude because first of all, she's going, okay, why are you talking to me? You know, first of all, I'm Samaritan. And if you hadn't noticed, I'm female. You know, she's kind of going, what is wrong with you? And I love it. He, he's, he's asked her for a drink, which was shocking and must have really, she must have been torn because Middle Eastern societies, desert societies, you don't refuse water to someone. Um, but she didn't just offer it up freely because prejudice goes both ways. She was not happy to see a Jewish man sitting there either. Uh, and she was probably, I, I, her lip probably curled when she saw who was sitting at the well. And it's like, oh great, just my luck. You know, where did this guy come from? Yeah, I tried to come out of the city when nobody would see me. Nobody knew yeah, I was around. Yeah. She, she didn't <laughs> like really like people. He says, if you knew who you were talking to, you would have asked me for water. And <laughs> I don't know if she was blonde or if she was being purposely <laughs> dim. I, she Middle wasn't East, catching I doubt on. She was blonde, but <laughs> You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> she she isn't catching on that he's not talking about real water. They're sitting there at Jacob's well, renowned for it was a hundred feet deep. The water in that well was clear and clean and cool, uh, which was would have been a prize back then. And she's going, I would have asked you for water. And it took her a while to catch on that he wasn't talking about literal water. Uh, she knew the term living water. Uh, they were Jewish enough, their religions were similar enough. She knew exactly the, the symbolism of that. Do you notice what happened to her prejudices the moment she did catch on who she was talking to? Washed away. <laughs> Just completely drops. She goes running back to town to share what she had just found. The cool thing to me is Jesus let her do all this. He let her ramble on and on and he just kind of, you know, gently let her step by step. Which he does with us too. Fortunately. And, and I love <laughs> the fact that he, he sought her out. I mean, that's a lesson for all of us with whatever prejudice we happen to have. Um, but it means he seeks me out before I even recognize I need him. She didn't go to the well that day thinking, I need a savior. Uh, but she knew that she was thirsty. Uh, 
not for literal water. She knew something was missing in her life. She knew she needed something. She'd been trying to fill it right with every husband that, right. you know, for, for years. And, uh, and that we see how that had worked out for her. Um, Jesus comes to us before we're even consciously seeking him. The cool thing is he puts that calling in our heart. You know that we may never understand that till heaven, but he calls us, seeks us before we ever know it, and he gently draws us toward himself to have that encounter that right there at the well. And I frankly, um, many many days, weeks, Sorry, months, mosquito. You know, yeah, I know <laughs> it's beautiful down here, but nature is attacking us. I don't know that I'm always as thirsty as she was. That's why every time you read that story, um, I am, my life has not gotten to the uncontrolled out that, that hers was, where you're even avoiding your neighbors because you know they're all looking down on you. Uh, so it's, let's go out at high noon when everybody who's sane is taking a siesta and that's when I can get to the well and back. Not only that, she didn't go to the nearest well. Sikar had a well right by the, just outside the front gate. It's so, so She's it, going to the one walking yeah. half a mile in the heat because she knows even if there is an idiot who's run out of water, uh, they're not gonna walk to the farther well. It's so interesting because as you'd stated, you know, she, she heads back to town and this woman who'd had just a brief encounter with Jesus becomes a witness to the entire right, community. Right, I mean, she went running back going, literally she says, come and see. You have to come and see this guy. He's told me everything that, that you know, he knows everything about me inside and out. That was her You've testimony. Got, yeah. yeah, I mean, how long had she been what we would call a Christian? <laughs> yeah, minutes. Uh, yeah, a few yeah. minutes. Yeah. And the first thing she's doing is bringing other, other people to Jesus. And I've kind of wondered, and maybe this is just a female thing. I thought, I wonder how many of the neighbors just went, because they wanted to hear every little thing that she'd ever done. <laughs> you know, they knew a few. <laughs> they had the, you know, the kind of the big picture. But I, some of them must have gone, well, I don't know who this guy is, but I'd love to hear some stories about her. <laughs> yeah. Just out of curiosity. <laughs> and the other neat thing about that in my mind is Christ was specifically wanted her, but he wanted everybody else, and he knew she yeah. was the, the one to touch everybody else. Right. Unlike, he couldn't do it. You know, they would have had too many prejudices in a town. Right. And if you are sitting at home, you might be going to church, you might be reading your Bible, but if you are not sharing living water, if you are not trying to reach out to other people, then I'm not sure you can be that convinced that you have living water to start with. Because the yeah. first thing that she did was turn around and tell other people and bring them to Jesus. And if I'm not doing that, then maybe I haven't really met him. Yeah, good point, Janice. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 tells us that our hearts are hopelessly deceitful and sick. We're all in desperate need of a heart transplant. The good news is that a new heart is available, free of charge with no waiting list. You can have it here and now, simply for the asking. This little pamphlet, A Gift for You, is our free gift to you about God's free gift to all of us, the gift of a new heart. Go to TalkingDonkeyInternational.org and request offer number 125, A Gift for You. Hi, I'm Steve Hicks, Director of Podcast Ministries for Talking Donkey International, and I'm inviting you to join us for our new daily podcast, Monday through Friday, called Something's Happening Here. I need you to go to the website that's on your screen right now. That's the Something's Happening Here Facebook page. Like that page. That will make you a follower of it, and you will get all of our content as we create it. I look forward to seeing you there. God bless. Hey, Janice, how are you doing? Hey, you wrote another book. I did. Had a burden on my heart, and God helped me get it done. So, The Plan of Love, what's it about? Well, it's really about God in eternity. Saw everything that was going to happen here, and His amazing love, He says, I'm going to take care of the problems. I'm going to take care of the situation by giving my own life. He did all that, 
But we've been lied to so much, we don't see what God has planned for us, what God is doing for us. Matter of fact, the angel came down to Mary and said, uh, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their, their sins. sins. Notice it wasn't in, but from. Where can people get the book? Hey, I'm glad you asked. Folks, if you'd like your own personal copy, log on to TalkingDonkeyInternational.org. And oh, please, if you would, send us a donation of $12. Or more. Or more. And uh, we'll get you the book, and I'll be happy to sign it for you, too. Thank you so much. You know, before we have to leave this beautiful little creek here, or I suppose we're in the south. Is it a creek? Yeah, well, yeah. Before we leave this creek. But there was another thought about the living water that Jesus offered the Samaritan woman. You know, he didn't just give her a sip say here this will take care of you just the immediate need there it wasn't even i can give you all the water you need for the day uh, when he described it to her he said it will be like a spring inside of you just bubbling up and bubbling over, over yeah. and and that's what she demonstrated i mean she had barely gotten a mouthful of it when she went running to share it because when you have that living water, you really can't keep it to yourself. Very true. Uh, he gives you plenty to share with everybody around you because that's the intent. You know, fill you and drown everyone next to you. I was thinking, and, and I'm not putting you on the spot, but what's that song? I've got a river of life flowing out of me. <laughs> yes. You know, that, right. that's God. And it talks, the, the chorus there is spring up, oh well. Yeah. It's, it's relating directly to that story. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And folks, here's the situation. Let, let me read to you, matter of fact, that reminds me. In Revelation 22, God says an amazing thing, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and the Lamb. A river of life, just what you're saying. Jesus came down here to show us the Father, to show us the eternal life, and he had that river of life flowing out of him, and that's the river he wants to give to us too. That's what's so amazing, you know, he offers that to us. And the only question is, how thirsty are you? Because if you know you're thirsty and you know that you need that water, all you have to do is ask. And, and, where, and where do you find that water? Right here, God's Word. It's His living Word. You spend time with this, get the dust off of it, you know, <laughs> move it off the shelf, spend time each day with it, and I guarantee you God will fill you with that living water. Please do it today. You will not be sorry you did. Thank you for watching. Join us again for another exciting country wisdom. See you next time.